Hello and welcome to this video. It is a beautiful day out today. The wind is blowing. I'm just sitting on the front porch. So if cars go by, if people go by and I stop filming for a second, you know what's happening. I just thought it'd be so fun to hang out together. Come hang out with me. We're gonna talk about 23 controversial health tips. And I don't even know how controversial these actually are. Some of them feel like everybody would agree with them. I just think it's funny that people have these like kind of, oh, there's a truck right there. People have these kind of like health codes that they live by and first of all, they're all so different. What I live by is going to be totally different than the next person, but it's also hilarious that you might hear about some of these and then you'll like kind of grab onto them and live by them the rest of your life, even if they're not factually based. It's just whatever. So yeah, I want to share mine and then I would love to hear yours by the end of it. So let's get started. <laughs> My number one here is that sugar doesn't make you fat. This is one that took me a very long time to realize. Like there was a point in my life where I cut out sugar entirely for seven months. It was brutal. Like sugar, unfortunately, is a very social thing. Also, it's freaking delicious. And I think it's totally okay to eat it in moderation and balance. So that's where I'm at with it now. <laughs> if you overdo sugar, like it can certainly lead to things like obesity. And I don't think it makes you feel very good if you overeat it. So that's just where I'm at with it now. I was just trying to create some balance. Uh, the next one, don't drink your calories. This is such a big one for me personally. I love water. The only other drinks that I consume are coffee, tea, and then sparkling water, which is usually like zero calories, maybe five if you squirt some little raspberry juice in there or something. Some of the most calorically dense things out there are liquids. So if you look at oils, sodas, alcohol, like they're insane. I just really love food. So I'd rather consume my calories by eating them personally. But again, if you love soda, work it into your diet. You'll figure it out. Life is for enjoying, I think is the theme for most of these. Wow, well, I've had my coffee and I'm just going off the rails here. I have my list on my book. Okay, next one. Alcohol is poison. It actually is poison. And so if you think about it that way, I think it just helps you place it into the right points in your life. And listen, I'm all for a good drink every now and then. Unfortunately, I have been breastfeeding and pregnant for so much of this chunk of life. Like it really hits you hard. <laughs> and so there's a long time when you can't really drink when you're going through this phase of life. It is so fun to do it with like a good group of friends and it is so relaxing in certain circumstances. I'm not saying stop doing that, like it's okay. However, I think the problem comes when it becomes a part of your personality. That's when I think you should take a step back and be like, mm, maybe I should change a few things here. This next one is also about food. I have a few points about food because you can't have a healthy tips video and not talk about food and exercise. Okay, so the next one is actually sitting down and enjoying your food slow down. <laughs> I always think it's funny because me and my husband will sit down, we'll make our plates of food. He'll have eaten his entire, almost his entire first plate of food before I'm taking like my third bite. I am just naturally a more slow eater. Like it's been scientifically proven that if you eat slower, you have more time to secrete the hormone what is it? Leptin for your satiety. It is scientifically based that if you eat slower, you feel more satisfied. And there's just something about the mind to food connection that I think is missing from a lot of our culture. A lot of times it's like, oh, I have this thing before dinner and this thing after dinner. So I just have to like wolf it down. Or it's even gotten to the point where it's like, I got to eat this on the road to and from work. It's like, no, <laughs> my priorities 100% are about food. I want to sit down and I want to eat it and enjoy it. Another thing too is like, stop eating your food in front of screens. Okay, I'm done. I'm done talking about that one. What's the next one? Everybody, I'm gonna say this again. Everybody can benefit from eating more fiber and protein. The protein is a new one for me. Like I've gotten a good amount of fiber in my life. When I started focusing on eating healthy and being healthy, I prioritized fiber and I felt great. I'm not gonna talk about my poops because they're good. The new thing that I'm on to is I have very recently <laughs> started weightlifting and I laugh at myself because I'm still very much baby in it. But everything that everybody tells me and I read about is like being more plant-based, more vegetarian, being a breastfeeding and like recently pregnant woman, an everyday kind of active person, and then somebody that's trying to weight lift. I need so much more protein than I am getting on a plant-based diet, not trying to prioritize it. So what I recommend is just kind of tracking your macros for just a week or two. Don't obsess about it. Don't don't worry, but just track it. See how you naturally lean and then try to throw in more protein and get more fiber in there as well and see how you feel because I bet you're gonna feel amazing. And it's also just how you start seeing progress if you are trying to go on any kind of fitness journey. So yeah, that's what I recommend. Okay, what's next? Don't demonize foods to create a healthy relationship with food. So, I mean, this is a big one for me because over time I have tried so many diets out there. But what I keep coming back to over and over and over again is that most of them are not sustainable. 
My favorite example is keto because everybody does keto and they love it because they instantly drop like 10 pounds or whatever, but then it's not sustainable. So they end up stopping for whatever reason, you know, they go on vacation or there's a big family gathering and then they go a period of time and then they try to get back onto keto and they can't do it because it's no fun. Quit cutting out foods. Just enjoy food. Find out what you like eating and then you can try to tweak little things like try to get a little more fiber in, try to get a little more protein in, make, a, make some wiser choices about maybe some processed foods. Yeah, just live your life. Okay, I'm done talking about food. This next one is about the sun. So I think it's funny because it feels like online, especially on Instagram, there's this pendulum that is being swung to the opposite direction and it is about you shouldn't let a drop of SPF land on your skin or else you will look like a sea hag. To the point that it's comical, you know, you see these people wearing these like massive sun hat things and they are covered with gloves and sleeves and like not an inch of their skin is exposed when they're on their beach holiday. And it's like, calm down, this is getting so ridiculous. And I'll read about people that are like, I wear SPF every single day, even if I am staying inside, the sunlight gets through the windows. It'll give me a wrinkle. I don't know, I feel like I would rather get a little more sun and get a few more wrinkles it's okay to have wrinkles so i uh, balance again is the word i'm looking for here because like yes if i'm going to be spending a long time outside in the sun i will wear sunscreen i will wear more sun protective clothing and i will seek the shade but i'm not going to forego playing outside with my kid or going on a hike or something because i'm trying to avoid getting wrinkles i don't know the sun makes me incredibly happy it makes our world beautiful and it also gives us vitamin d so i'm not going to try to cut it out completely from my life next one for me routines are where you find your happiness and it's not these like big life moments i feel like this is where instagram pushes its biggest lie so you follow all these people these friends these people you don't even know your feed is full of these big life moments like oh this person just graduated oh this person just got pregnant Oh, this person's on their summer trip in Europe. You feel like less of a, a human being because you're not having all these big life moments all the time. When in reality, what they're showing you is not even the full picture. You're just seeing the glamorous side of it. You haven't looked at their last four years of grueling, stressful, miserable life as they're going through school and taking all these exams. You're not looking at that twin friend that just had like the most stressful eight months of their life because they feel horrible <laughs> as they're carrying two humans inside. Focus on you and yourself and then more importantly, the the thing that I have learned is routines are where the happiness comes from because we have lived a fairly nomadic life for these past few years like we're not very settled people and all I crave is for some routines some stability some baseline I mean if you look at yourself when you go on these big trips on a holiday for a week or whatever what do you crave by the end of it you just want to go home you want to get into your routine again you want to start making your own food again because that's how you feel good find the happiness in your everyday moments instead of being jealous of other people's big life moments Next one. <laughs> this is a big, I get paranoid about this one, but it's, um, the world is toxic. Try to minimize it where you can, but don't overdo it. Like, don't go crazy about it because I have. Because everything you read online is like, everything is trying to kill you. Your carpet is toxic. Watch out what kind of car seat you buy. Like, don't use any plastic in your home. The list is endless. Like, it's overwhelming and it's stressful. You feel like you're doing everything wrong because you can't win. Even if you try to buy organic food, now they come out and say, like, like organic is even worse for you in some cases and it's all just a marketing scam. I don't know. There's no winning and I think that's the biggest thing to take away from it. Pick out the things that bother you the most. For me, I really don't like plastic, especially when it comes to food. I don't like heating up any of my food in plastic. I have made my kitchen pretty much plastic free where I can and when I can. I try to let go of the rest. I try not to stress about it. I mean, I still do sometimes, but I don't know where I'm at with this one. Because <laughs> on the flip side, I do really think that a lot of the things that are created for our world and that we live in, these companies and corporations, they don't care about us. They just want to make as much money as they can. They don't care if they destroy the environment in the process. They don't care if they harm people in the process. They'll care when they get sued and then they lose the lawsuits because they have actually created products that are carcinogenic and are trying to kill us. Anyways, this is a rambly run. I don't know. I don't know about this one. Okay, moving on. This one. Don't overdo exercise for a healthy relationship with your body. It can be a very slippery slope once you start trying to over exercise to like try to get a certain body type and it's ridiculous. Like my philosophy is find what you love doing so then you can do it consistently. Because if you see somebody online that's doing Pilates three times a week and they're spending a bunch of money on it and then you go and you try it out and you don't like it but you feel like you want their body so you try to keep doing it anyways. It's madness. So go and try out different things. Find out what you like doing and then stick with it because that's the, the key is consistency. 
not doing what your favorite Instagrammer is doing. But the most damaging part is when you try so hard and then you don't give yourself any rest days. You feel guilty for not going to the gym and giving yourself a rest day. Like that's when you know you've gone too far. Take a step back and kind of refigure and rebalance some things out. Another one that I've more recently come to figure out for myself is cardio is immediate. So it burns calories in the moment. Weightlifting or resistance training, that's more of the like long-term benefits. So with weightlifting or resistance training, you are actually like ripping your muscles. And so your body has to take the next few days to repair them. And so doing that boosts your metabolism over time. So it's less of an immediate thing and more of a long-term investment if you will. The other thing that's really cool about it is with weightlifting or resistance training, you're actually building up bone density. Like you are making your body so much healthier. And not to say that cardio is not great. Like you should be doing cardio. Obviously it makes your heart healthier. Like it has a lot of good benefits, but especially for women, once you turn 30, you start losing bone density. And that's when you have to start worrying about things like osteoporosis. And so taking the time now and trying to build up as much as possible that's how you will have a healthier and happier granny hood. Okay, this is something that I have to like teach myself at least once a week. Do the hard thing first. Program the hardest part of your day and the beginning of the day. So then you don't have it hanging over you for the whole rest of your day. And especially like when you have kids, if I don't prioritize and get my workout in or whatever, the hardest thing, if I don't do it first, I have it hanging over me all day long. And then the day just kind of gets away from me. And by the end of the day, I'm like, shoot, I am out of energy. I am spent. I have given everything I have to my children. Now I can't work out. Whereas I knew that if I get it done in the morning, I feel great. I feel accomplished and everything else just flows easier. It feels better. So yeah, just making it a priority, getting it done soon. And then the rest of the day is, is beautiful. This next one, me and Billy say to each other all the time, it is set yourself up for success. And this is just one of those little key things that I feel like it becomes a part of your personality and it just makes your whole life flow better. So some examples are if you're making dinner, clean up dinner as you go. So then you don't have this huge overwhelming mess at the end. You just have a little bit to pick up because by the time you're done eating, you look at that big mess and you're like, I don't want to do that. And so then you don't do it. You leave it for the next day. And then you're trying to make breakfast and clean up all that stuff from the night before. It's chaotic and it's a mess. Just take that moment to do the thing. So then your future self can thank you and life is less stressful. Another example, make sure that you do your grocery shopping and that you keep tabs of like what you run out of as you run out of it. And so it's just not this chaotic mess later. You're dealing with it as it's coming and it just makes life better. Take a moment now to make your life easier later. That's the tagline. Okay, this is a cool one. How you think of yourself is what you become. Take something that you don't like about yourself and then flip it. So instead of saying, I am a lazy person, because if you say that you internalize it and that becomes a part of you, it becomes a part of your personality. So instead, start saying, I am a proactive person. Suddenly you find yourself doing the tip before of like setting yourself up for success. You're not just going to sit on the couch and be like, no, I'm not going to do that now. I'll deal with it later. You are a proactive person and you believe that about yourself. And I know that I have wasted years of my life wishing that I was different in certain ways, you know? I wish that I was thinner or more athletic or more funny, but it's like, just turn those on the head. And honestly, I can say now, I do not believe any of those things about myself. I became a better person because I believed in myself, kind of. Is there a puppy that just flew into me? <laughs> so try it out and see if it works for you because I totally believe in it. It sounds a little hokey, but whatever. And the other thing that goes along with that is you get one life. Don't waste it. Don't waste your life wishing that you were something else. Either accept it and move on or try to flip it and see what happens. <sighs> This next one is a big one that I will not budge on. Get your quality sleep. I function so much better as a human if I get enough sleep. I know how much sleep I need every single night. I mean, there are certain seasons of life when you know that you can't get it. You know, you have a baby, you're gonna have to sacrifice some sleep. If you are in college and you have finals coming up and you have to cram every single night, like just accept those moments. But overall, when you can, prioritize sleep. Put your phone away and get an extra hour of sleep. Prioritize sleep. I know that I do and it makes me feel so much better. It makes me a better human. Okay, I love this one. Check your scrolling time and your scrolling frequencies. So these are two different things. You can actually go on your iPhone and you can see, first of all, how many hours you spend on your phone every single day, which is shocking. It's depressing. And then second of all, you can actually check how much time you spend on every single app. You can see that you have spent an hour and 38 minutes on Instagram. I'm gonna say it. If you're spending more than four hours on your phone, you're doing something wrong. And I say this from a place of love because I have this problem and it's something that I want to work on and become a little bit better at. Life is for living. It's not for checking out other people's lives. 
But the other thing about this is checking your phone frequencies. Check with yourself <laughs> and see at what points in the day you're pulling out your phone. How frequently are you pulling it out? So like if you're in the grocery store line and you have to wait a whole 10 seconds, are you pulling out your phone? Are you opening up Instagram to not even look at it? <sighs> It's mind boggling when you actually take a moment. Or like if you're on an elevator and again, you have this moment of boredom, do you whip your phone out to try to alleviate that? We need to learn how to sit with ourselves and to feel the emotion of boredom. It's a skill that we have lost <laughs> since phones and social media and technology have gotten so advanced. Next is spend time looking into your loved one's eyes for like actual good quality time. You can get down the slippery slope of like you're in the same room, you're on the same couch, but you're both on your phones and you are not having any good quality time with each other. Like you're just ignoring each other. <sighs> for me personally, I'm pretty firm about if I am talking to another human being, I will not have my phone out. That is not the time and it's not the place. I actually get yelled at pretty often because I don't answer phone calls right away. I take a while to get back on text messages and it's honestly usually because I am living in the moment and I don't see anything wrong with that. I'm not glued to my phone and to me it's like if you look back 30 years from now am I gonna be sad that I didn't spend more time on my phone and get back to that phone call right away? No. <laughs> I'm going to look back and be like man I'm so glad that I put my phone away and I was living in the moment making actual human connection. Do you hear all this honking? Going on adventures with people and just embracing the day instead of other people's days. I don't know. Ooh, I love this one too. Okay, stop getting angry and chill the f out. <laughs> Me personally, I kind of have like a higher threshold of patience and tolerance, and so I don't get angry super often. If I do, it's usually on my toddler, which is not great, but here we are. I feel like it honestly kind of shows this immaturity if you just snap at everything. If you do find yourself getting angry and kind of jumping at a lot of little things, my biggest recommendation is taking a moment to not react. I think that's the biggest thing. Because if you actually take a second, don't let any emotion show on your face, don't have any kind of reaction, don't say anything, it actually gives you a second to look at the thing, whatever just happened, and then you're like, oh wait, that's not actually a big deal. I don't know, everything in your life just runs smoother, your relationships are happier. It's just a lot better to have like a sillier and happier outlook on life. You can roll with things more, you're more flexible. I don't know. People are just so quick to get angry and I don't think it serves anybody. It doesn't help you and it doesn't help the situation. Another thing, I have a friend <laughs> that came up with this where it's stop judging other people because if you are sitting there judging and nitpicking every little thing about other people, you do that to yourself. And if you instead start giving people the benefit of the doubt, then you in turn give yourself the benefit of the doubt and it just makes everything better. Okay, this is one that I get so passionate about. Do not give up your life for your job. Unless you have this job that you're actually super passionate about. For most people, it's the nine to five kind of situation. Cause like I actually have friends and family that have made themselves sick. Like I need to go to the hospital because I have had chronic stress for such a long time. It's ridiculous. Like these jobs don't care about you. They might say to your face, oh, thank you for all the work that you do. Like you are such a valued family member in this team. They'll turn around and fire you in a second for whatever reason. You were just a cog in the machine. Do not give your life up for them. And it's just them taking advantage of people that are just naturally people pleasing and they like to give their all they like to give their best it doesn't serve you do what your job requirement says that you need to do and then leave it at that be a happy employee or whatever but don't go above and beyond there's no reason to do not conform yourself to nonsensical beauty standards this is something that i get so fiery about and actually the reason that I learned about this is I watched something that kind of explained beauty standards over the years and it just goes to show how insane it all is. Like it's based off of one person and then suddenly thousands upon thousands of women are like killing themselves to look a certain way. They're getting plastic surgeries to cut themselves open and to put in weird things into their body to look different than how they naturally are. I don't know. I'm a big fan of letting your natural beauty shine. You can walk into a room and that's what people will notice. They're not going to notice that you are a copy and paste replica of somebody else. Being authentic, being genuine, being yourself, and just letting that glow, like that is so much more beautiful than anything else that you could possibly do. Again, don't waste years of your life trying to look a certain way. Just accept that this is the way that you look. Your body is a vessel for living your happiest life. Make it functional, make it healthy, like you can give those investments to yourself, but do not waste time. Don't even waste a second wishing for something else that isn't true for your body. It's not worth it. <sighs>
gets into those cars. Okay, this is a bit of a silly one, but I think not giving into peer pressure is cool. I think it's hilarious when people have their ego and their pride tied into what kind of car they drive. I would be so much happier driving this little beater, as long as it's, you know, a good car, than spending thousands and thousands of dollars on something that runs pretty much just as well, but I don't know, looks a little more flash. It's ridiculous. There's a little hummingbird that has a nest up here on the porch. Um, along with that, it's like, I think being frugal is cool. Being your own person, not trying to look a certain way or act a certain way to try to copy other people, I think that makes you a cooler person. And also just kind of realizing that you won't be the person for everybody. Like you're not going to be everybody's cup of tea and that's okay. Give your energy, put it out there, and then the people that are like you will find you and you'll work together. Like don't spend your energy trying to be what somebody else expects and wants from you. I wish you could see this on bird, it's so cute. My very last tip is cut the relationships that don't serve you. And that might sound brutal, but for example, I moved to another country and I tried very hard for a very long time to make a lot of friends. And it took a, a while before I realized this, but I was, for certain people, I was giving and giving so much energy. I was the one to initiate everything. And then I realized after a while, I started to feel bad about myself. Like, do they not like me? I must not be fun enough. They don't want to hang out with me. Like, what's wrong with me? And then after some time, I realized what was happening and I'm just like, this isn't, this isn't working for me. This isn't serving me. So I cut them off and <laughs> I can honestly say I'm a much happier person because of it. Then you just have so much more time and energy to give to the people that actually care about you. I mean, it doesn't have to be a super negative thing. Like I tried to give them the benefit of doubt and just try to say like oh this is a season of their life where they're not in a position to give a lot of energy to me and that's okay like you know they might have just had a couple of kids they don't have the space to try to make another friend but I don't need to try to go above and beyond to try to please them to make them attracted to me anyways and then also another big thing is realizing that there are some personalities out there that just suck energy <laughs> out of everybody around them. It might take you a couple years, but look back at certain relationships and see if they have only just taken and taken. They've never given back and they've just created a lot of negativity for you. Cut them off. See what happens. Nine times out of ten, I bet that they won't even contact you again. Like, they'll just let it subside right away. And that is how you know that you made a very good decision. Because then that gives more room for your life for the people that you love and uh, it just makes your life all around a lot better. So those are my 23 tips. I hope you liked them. And again, please let me know what kind of like health codes you live by to make your life healthier, to make it work better. I love hearing them. And then also let me know what you liked from my list and what you live by. Go down to the comments and let's let's talk. This is my very cold copy. <laughs> But thanks for being here with me. Thanks for watching. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.